Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Extra Keen for the first time in a couple months, and you know, I'm just checking in on you guys. It's been a while since I've made a video. In the past couple months, I have gotten married, I have got a house, and most importantly, I've started working full time, so you know, 40, 50, 60 hours a week, and just haven't had the time to put into making the videos, but you know what, like I said, I'm just here to check in on you guys, and they just released a whole bunch of new content for Varlamore, so I figured I would just kind of explore it, because, you know, my diary cape isn't trimmed anymore, I can't even wear the music cape, so we're gonna go finish up all the quests, get all the new music tracks unlocked, and we're gonna go see all the new content that was just posted in this new update, so let's head over to Varlamore. Nothing too crazy, we've been here many times before, but let's take a look at the map and just see all the new areas, because I haven't even really played since the update came out. So let's see what's new. This is all the same. I know this island wasn't here before. Doesn't have a name, okay, cool. So yeah, I know there was something to do with grapes. There was a new, I think the new Herblore minigame is on this island somewhere. A new fairy ring, okay, that'll be helpful to get there. Um, yeah, can you tell that I haven't really paid too much attention to the Varlamore updates? This is gonna be kind of like a blind walkthrough of all this new content. All this stuff was here before, but I think all of this stuff up here is new, and this is probably where the new boss is. And where the new, I guess two new bosses, there's two new bosses, isn't there? Yeah, this one. When the update came out, I saw people posting that they were getting this boss pet, like, on Twitter, and I'm like, I didn't realize there was another boss. Was this, like, unpolled or something? But I guess this is, like, at the end of the quest we're about to do. You unlock a new boss, and there's a new pet that I didn't know about, so that's cool. And the other one is the Huey Quaddle, which is uh, the one I'm excited for, because that's a sick pet. But we'll get into that in a minute. We're just going to start with the quests for now. Okay, the first one should start here. This one is a continuation of the Twilight Promise quest, I believe. So we're just going to talk to the prince here and get it started. Okay, so what I understand is the plot from this quest is there's people conspiring to kill the king of Varlamore. And it's our job to go undercover, we're going to join the cult, the Twilight Emissary cult, and we are going to see what they're up to from the inside, so... Yeah, that's our place in the world for the next couple minutes. So we gotta rent the basement room in the Quetzalcali Gorge pub. And a contact of his will meet me there. Isn't that exactly what happened in Skyrim? Okay, I think this is a new area. We used uh, Renu here to travel to Quetzalcali Gorge. I don't think I've been here before, but maybe I have, I don't know. Anyway, the pub is right here. And he's the contact, okay. So this shopkeeper here, he's a member of the cult, and we just set up a mission to join the cult. So we're gonna go do that now, and uh, hopefully we get into some action, because all this dialogue in the quests, I just can't, I, I can't be asked to keep up with all this reading, man. I wanna fight some bosses. I will say though, it is kinda crazy that this is old school RuneScape, because I don't know, just this gate, I don't know, it just looks really good. Art team did a fantastic job with all the Varlamore updates, I'm gonna say. Oh, I guess I'm passing the boss right now. This is where the, the Huey Kotal is. It's a group boss, as you can see, because there's a million people fighting it right now, so... We're definitely gonna check this out at some point, but this mountain right here is where the new boss is. Alright, we're up here at the new area where we're supposed to be. And I don't know if you noticed by looking at my inventory, but I have all this extra stuff on me, and that is to build this landing site right here. So, now, whenever we finish the quest, I believe, we're gonna be able to... Oh, no, we can use it right now. So, yeah, we can come here whenever we want to. All right, next trial, what do we got? What do we got? One more trial, face your opponent. Okay, so I gotta kill the prince. I don't think the queen is gonna be happy with me with this one. All right, let's give it a shot. Luckily, I looked up all the mechanics before the fight, so <laughs> it should be pretty easy. Sweet, we are in the cult. Now I can get myself some new robes. I liked my outfit better. There we go, there's the new boss. After a bunch of puzzles throughout this whole ice dungeon, I don't really have a lot of supplies, so I'm hoping this fight can go pretty easy. It should be mid-level, so I'm confident. I'm assuming this fight is just pray mage, attack the boss, and uh, avoid the mechanics, stuff that appear on the floor. Seems pretty self-explanatory to me. There we go. Cool, and now I can fight that boss after the quest is over and get myself a new pet, hopefully. I think I just talked to this guy and that's the quest completed. There we go, Heart of Darkness. We have access to the new boss, bunch of XP, and some quest points. All right, that was, I think, the big one. We'll see, um, but there are three more quests to go. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Have you ever wanted to learn how to code, but don't know where to begin? Or maybe you've tried learning in school or by watching YouTube videos, but it's just so boring that you never ended up sticking to it. Well, today's sponsor, Boot.dev, sought out to make a more fun and interactive way to learn how to program by making it feel more like an RPG. You can get XP, level ups, and complete quests by learning how to code, which is awesome because we all know how good it feels to see numbers get bigger. With Boot.dev, you'll learn back-end development from start to finish in the Python and Go programming languages. 
and the goal is designed to get you to write a ton of code because the best way to learn is by actually getting your hands on the keyboard and practicing your coding. This is a really cool way to get started learning backend development. And if you stick with it and start a career in that field, programmers have amazing earning potential, the median salary for backend developers being over $100,000 in 2023. And not to mention, a lot of the times you can work remotely or from home, which gives you more time to AFK RuneScape on the side. So if this sounds like something you'd be interested in, definitely click the link in the description and use code EXTRAKEEN to get 25% off your first payment for boot.dev. That's 25% off your first month or your first year, depending on the subscription you choose. Thanks again to boot.dev for sponsoring today's video, and let's get back into it. All right, guys, welcome back. The next quest we're going to be doing is Ethically Acquired Antiques. I have no clue what this quest is, but it should be a short little, I guess, just a fun quest or something like that, based around the museum here in Varlamore. All right, so essentially what this quest boils down to is there was a missing thing from a display case in the museum in Varlamore, and we tracked down a person who was all suspicious coming out from the museum. We've got all the way down here and found out that it was, in fact, this guy. Maybe he wanted it for the Varrock Museum? I don't know. All right, I stole a key from him. We're going to see if we can find the thing in here. Oh, there it is. If I find it, why can't I just take it? Oh my god, we have to we have to like teach him the error of his ways or something? I just want to get the thing back. So this guy's story is that a thief came in and stole the thing from the museum, but rather than putting it back, he stole it for his own museum. What a piece of work. Okay, there's the quest completed. Ethically acquired antiques. Some thieving XP, some coins. Um, yeah, that was a quick one. Not too bad. And uh, moving on to the next one, because that wasn't nothing really of note for that quest, honestly. Also, while I'm gearing up for this next quest, I just want to take a minute to shout out the clan real quick. If you need a clan to hang out in, it's pretty much like a social clan. So if you just want someone to talk to you while you're playing the game or maybe find some people to do some group stuff with, definitely join. You just go to the clan is called Extra Keen. You can just join as a guest and then let us know and we'll invite you in. No questions asked. You know, as long as you're not a creep or anything. You're not a creep, are you? Okay, so the next quest we're going to do is called Meet and Greet. And once again, I have absolutely no idea what this quest is all about, but you know, we're going to find out. All right, so this guy's trying to start an exciting new business venture where he's trying to open up a kebab store. Okay. You know, I'm a pretty big kebab guy myself, so <laughs> yeah, I might be able to invest in this. So just to catch you up with this quest, apparently this guy wants to bring kebabs from the other half of RuneScape to Varlamore. We got the kebabs made. We got the perfect kebabs made. All the ratio of meat to lettuce to all that stuff. And we're marketing it at the Coliseum. And that's what we're here for. So we're going to get people into the kebabs at the Coliseum. And I'm not exactly sure why this is a good marketing event, but it's essentially me with a minotaur. And I just ate a kebab and he thought I ate minotaur meat. So uh, he's pissed and now we got to fight him. All right. And this should be quest completed right here. There we go. Meet and greet. Cooking XP, access to his kebab shop and premium prices, two coins each. One quest left from this new update, Death on the Isle, and this is gonna take us to the island of Alderin, which is right over here. I guess that's what this island is called. So let's see if this fairy ring works without having to unlock it or anything. Here we are, first time on the island of Alderin. They like grapes, I know that for a fact. And yeah, it looks pretty nice here. It looks like a really cozy island. Alderin locked, UIM, when? Who's gonna do it? Just look at this guy. So apparently I'm a butler right now. Um, I'm still not really understanding the quest too much. I think it's uh, supposed to be like some kind of murder mystery and I'm like, again, interrogating from the inside, like all these quests seem to have me doing. So yeah, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a butler. I see where this is going. <laughs> I went downstairs to get some wine, spilt some red wine on my shirt, and we just so happened to find a dead person here. So pretty sure I'm gonna get accused of this. Yeah, there it is. It looks pretty suspicious, I'm not gonna lie, but what can I say? It wasn't me. There's a lot of things you can learn from RuneScape, and apparently kicking women is one of them. Real good game, Jagex. Okay, Death on the Isle has been completed. Bunch of XP, ability to use a costume needle, whatever that is. And uh, yeah, that is every quest completed once again. 169 out of 169. This quest was fine, you know, classic murder mystery quest. More of like a do-it-yourself and read the dialogue kind of thing than anything I can show you, but... Yeah, that's all the quests completed in Varlamore Part 2. So now we get to get into the real good stuff, which is showing off the new bosses and all the new content that we have. And I guess since we're already on the island of Alderin, I think it's called, um, we might as well start off with the new minigame, which is the Herblore minigame. I've never done this before, haven't seen anything about it, so let's go see what it's all about. Oh, but apparently there is one thing that I need to do before I finish up with this quest. Talk to Constantinius, and he gives me a key, I believe. Oh no, I pickpocket for the key. 
There we go. And then down here in the wine cellar, there should be a fancy chest over here. And I can use the key to open it up. And opening that chest gives me the ability to search a fountain in the courtyard, and that'll give me something cool. Should be this one, the Southwest Fountain. I get this icon right here. And I can use that icon on this statue right here at the northeast corner of the island. And that activates it, so... I'm not really sure what that does, but everything's vibrating. Oh wait, I know what this does. So there's a drop you get from that ice boss, whatever it's called. The Amoxalotl, I don't know how to pronounce that, but you get the Pendant of Adis, Adis, whatever. And it can use to teleport to these statues, so that is what it does. Anyway, now let's check out the Herblore minigame. All right, I just headed down the stairs, and now we're here at the Mastering Mixology minigame. Looks like it's pretty popular right about now. So I watched a guide on this, so this is essentially how it works. There's a bank right here and a refiner right here. You put the herbs into it, and it makes all this stuff for you. You can just spam click to speed up this process. There we go. I got a little bit of each, just enough to show you how this works. And then we go into this room right here. So first, we deposit all of our pastes into the hopper here, and then we can go over here and it shows us what to do. I have the plugin installed called Mastering Mixology on Runelight, and that kind of makes this interface a little bit easier to use. So I'm going to make the green one right here. It's AAA, which means you pull the AGA lever three times. AGA, A, Mox, M, Li, L. You got it. So we pull that three times, and then we take the potion from the middle, and that gives us an unfinished potion, and then it's already highlighted over here. We can make the crystallized potion. Click it again when it turns green. There you go. And uh, that's the full potion. Then we just deposit it right there. We get a bunch of herbal or XP and some AGA points. And let's make another one. M, L, L. There's another potion. Use it on here. Click it when it turns green. There we go. Finished potion. Deposit it over here for herbal or XP and more points. And that's essentially how the minigame works. I don't know if this is better XP than just making potions or if it's just a better way. I think it's more of like you don't need secondary potion. All you need is herbs. You don't need secondary supplies, which kind of makes it a little bit easier for Iron Man. <laughs> Classic Jagex update. Yeah, that's the minigame. There should be a guy right here to trade rewards for. I'm probably going to come back here eventually. The main thing I want is the pre-pot device. Because what this does is it allows you to pretty much add potion doses into this thing. And then you can just do one big pre-pot all at once. So like a stam, super combat, ranging potion, whatever. And uh, that seems pretty helpful for doing raids and stuff. So I'll come back here and get that eventually. But yeah, let's check out the collection log here. There's seven new things to get. An outfit, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, that's the minigame. So let's go check out the bosses next. First boss that we're going to fight is Moxie. I'm going to call her Moxie because that's what the pet is called, and I don't know how to pronounce the full name, so the Amoxalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalal
Um, I guess we'll see once all of the drop table things are released. But I'm just gonna go for the back-to-back -back real quick and then uh, then we'll see. All right, nothing cool for the back-to-back. -back. So there we go, we did 83 kills real quick and I do mean real quick because, yeah, this didn't take long at all. I'm gonna say that boss is really fun. I'm excited to grind out the pet on that one. But the pendant right here, I am assuming we charge it up with these tiers right here. There we go. And let's see where we can go. The only one I unlocked is the North Alderan one that I talked about earlier. So I guess we can unlock all of the other ones from here. There's another statue activated. This is the one that's right next to the boss we were just fighting. So now we should be able to teleport right here. Here's another statue activated. This is the one that's right next to the Huey Koto boss. And here's the last one over here by like where the perilous moons are at. So there we go. We have all four of the teleports unlocked for this new pendant. And that is pretty cool. There's only two more things to go over from this update, I believe. And that is the agility course and the Huey Kotal boss. So let's check out the agility course because that one is not as climactic of an ending as the boss would be. So let's check out the agility course. It looks like the fastest way to get there is by using the Quetzal transportation and going down to the colossal worm remains. So here we are, and this is gonna be the new agility course. Now this thing is pretty cool because it actually has some unique rewards. Oh, I'm gonna look at this guy right here. Uh, this guy right here has the new graceful variety. You can unlock this new graceful set right there. So that's pretty cool. Um, and you get that essentially by just running this course and the same way that like marks of grace appear sporadically throughout doing rooftop agility, you get like a different type of currency which I guess is called termites, and that's what's used to get rewards from this place. So let's do a lap of this course and see what it's all about. So far, it looks like it's just a regular old rooftop course, so I don't know what's exactly special about it. Maybe it's got like really good XP per hour or something. That's kind of AFK, honestly. Dude, we're do we just did so many different steps, all with just one click. That might be a pretty good appeal of this course, as far as like rooftop agility goes. Let's see what the XP drop is at the end. 325 agility XP. And a new Worm Course PB. I didn't realize we're racing for PBs here. Let's go for the sub one minute. And there we go, 101. Damn, can I get a sub one minute? I don't know, I feel like I did that pretty perfectly. I don't know if I can get any lower than that. But yeah, you can go to the shop here at this anteater and you can buy all these recolor things. This is for the squirrel pet, teleport scrolls, amylase crystals, and graceful recolors. So yeah, pretty cool. As a guy with 99 agility though, I don't know if I'm gonna get too much use out of this course, but I don't know, is there a new collection log for it at least? Oh, there is, Colossal Worm Agility, okay. So, every piece of the Graceful Outfit, the Acorn, and the Teleport. So, if you're a collection logger, there's something to do here. I'm kind of a collection logger, but not really, so... Maybe I'll come here one day, but not today. Let's go check out the Huey Kotal boss and finish off this video. So, what I'm gonna do to get there is just use this pendant that I just got, and we can go to the Dark Frost. That's a pretty cool animation. And the boss is just right over here. I haven't done this boss before, but I have watched a guide on it. So essentially there is a bank buffalo right here, which is pretty cool, because we can bank. And then we're just waiting for these guys to finish up their kill. And this is a group boss, so we're all gonna be doing it together. So the way this fight starts is we just kind of attack all of these caves right here. This is the body of the Huey Kotal. And then after that happens, we can walk past this entrance right here and go up to the boss. And this is where we damage it. We dodge the things on the floor, just smack the boss around a couple times. I don't know which one to use here, if I should use the Scythe or the Dragon Hunter Lance. Uh, the tail will pop out, we attack the tail. Again, don't know whether I should use the Lance or the Scythe here, I've seen people use both. But in mass worlds like this, the kills are really fast. And I think every world is like a mass right now because of like the boss is new, so people wanna do it. There's my first kill, 52 seconds. We got a ton of cannonballs. And that's the boss, essentially. So yeah, let's see if we can get any loot from this boss. Well, this guy right here just got the Tome of Earth drop, so I guess this is a good time to go over what the boss actually drops. So yeah, we got the Tome of Earth and the Soiled Pages, which are like the, you know, burned pages, soaked pages, the Book of Earth equivalent. There's the pet, there's a Dragon Hunter wand, there's a Huey Kotal hide, and a Huasca seed. I don't really know what most of that stuff is. I'm assuming the wand is just like, you know, the Dragon Hunter lance or the Dragon Hunter crossbow, but it's a mage version of it. That seems pretty self-explanatory. Book of Earth is pretty self-explanatory. The hide and the seed, I don't exactly know what those do, but you know what? I guess we'll figure that out eventually. Oh, there we go. We got a soiled page collection log slot. That's something. Hey, look at this. We were doing some uh, three-person teams from the clan, and uh, we ended up actually getting a drop. Someone here got a Dragon Hunter wand. We love to see that, so drops do exist. It's confirmed. And uh, these small groups, I think, are a lot better. The kills take a lot longer, so it's not as good for, like, getting ranks. But um, I will say that it's 
a lot more realistic of a chance that you'll actually get a drop in your name. So this is pretty cool. I like it. Oh my god, he got another drop. <laughs> he got the Tome of Earth. Jeez, save some for the rest of us, man. Well, that's two drops in uh, I don't know how many kills. I'm at 69 KC right now, so we're cooking. We are cooking. Oh my god, another Tome of Earth. Not for me. <laughs> Everyone's getting log slots. Uh, I guess that just means I'll get the pet first, right? That's what it means, surely, right? And here we go. This is the last kill that I'm going to do in this video. Hopefully we get something cool. We do not. Just some rune scimitars. Yeah, I like this boss too. Both the new bosses that came out of this update, honestly, I like them a lot. So I'm going to be excited to grind out the pets for those in the future. But for now, that was all I really wanted to do today was explore the new update, see what kind of content it was. And overall, I think it was pretty cool. So yeah, until next time, you guys, I'm still making content slowly but surely. I got some videos in the back burner, a lot of clips recorded, just need to edit them. So be patient. Thanks for sticking around. Drop a like and uh, see you guys next time. Have a good one.